Is that really in the Bible? You live in a world where everyone has an opinion about the Bible. Of what values are your beliefs if they are not clearly found in the pages of your Bible? The question we must ask is, are your opinions and beliefs really found in the Bible? Well, hello, I'm David Freeman with Is That Really in the Bible? I want to talk to you about a doctrine that you probably have never heard of before. It's called the Fair Chance Doctrine. Let me repeat that, the Fair Chance Doctrine. And the Fair Chance Doctrine basically states that everyone who has ever lived and died will get a chance for salvation during God's timing. It's called the Fair Chance Doctrine. Now, when I say that everyone who has ever lived and died will get a chance for salvation during God's timing, God's timing includes at least two resurrections from the dead. In other words, just because a person has lived and died without Christ does not mean they are eternally lost, is what I'm saying. Now, you would think that's the best news anyone could ever hear because we all have loved ones, whether we want to admit it or not. Family members, children, uh, people in other countries whose uh, religion is voodoo, uh, you know, Eastern, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, all these, you know, Eastern religions that, that don't know Christ and have never known Christ or anything about Christ. You know, we all have people that we're concerned about. Okay. I remember a story about a mother who had a drunk son, and, and he was working on a construction site, fell, hit his head, knocked himself out, laid out there all night, and froze to death. He died. And she basically, in order to justify this madness of what happened, he was not saved. He was, never, he was not a churchgoer. He'd never been to church. He, you know, he just fit in the category of being lost. Okay. But she had a vision. According, according to what, you know, that her son was now in heaven. Now, rather than, you know, I would rather base my faith on the Bible, not on a vision or a dream that I had, okay? Now, when I say everyone uh, had, well, ever, that has ever lived and died will get a chance for salvation during God's timing, let's take a look at some examples of this from the Bible, okay? The first one is Mark 6 and verse 11. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your word, when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now, what is this talking about? In the day of judgment. Well, and, 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 and what, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? I mean, weren't they destroyed in like an, a, a, a fiery volcanic you know, eruption? I mean, they were all destroyed. They were all killed. And yet Jesus comes along and says, look, in the day of judgment, it's going to be more likely that these people repent than for you people. And then he was talking to a bunch of self-righteous religious people, by the way. And he said, look, it's going to be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Where does it say in this verse that they cannot repent later in the day of judgment? The problem is most people don't understand what this judgment is. It's a hundred year period of time where you're, you're given to turn your life towards Christ. That's what the day of judgment is. Most people, you see the problem <clears throat> Most people don't know the difference between judgment and sentencing. Most people look at judgment as a sentencing, you know. That's not the way it works, you know. When do you judge a boxing match? Well, why it's going on through the different rounds. It's only after it's over do you come to a sentencing, okay. But most people just think it's one and the same thing, judgment and sentencing. It's not. There's a judgment period of time that people are going to be given. So, everyone who has ever lived and died will get a chance for salvation during God's timing, which includes a couple of resurrections, um, especially the second resurrection, okay, which is life from the dead. What is the second resurrection? Well, it's coming back to life again. 
and giving, you are given a judgment period of time for these people, Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, all the people that we want to talk about, Eastern religion, people that, that whose religion is voodoo and over in Africa, you know, they're going to be given a chance, okay? Everybody gets a chance according to God's timing. Revelation 20 and verse 5, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Yeah, the first resurrection is the best resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So we're talking about a time when the rest of the dead are going to live again. Well, who are the rest of the dead? Well, they're, they're all those who never had a chance for salvation in this lifetime. That's, what, that's who the rest of the dead are. Okay, now we're all familiar with the first death. It's appointed unto all men to die once. Okay, we're all, we all know about the first death. But in order, to be, in, order, in order for there to be a second death, you have to be resurrected first in order for there to be a second death. And it's, it's, it's when this fair chance to receive or reject, the, the fair chance doctrine to receive or reject salvation. The second death, once, once you're given that fair chance to receive or reject salvation in the second resurrection, the second death will be the end of you the end of your existence you will, existence you will no longer exist you will be destroyed and yes i mean destroyed the end of you in a lake of fire okay you're not going to burn forever and all, all eternity but you're just going to be destroyed the end of you now what did paul say about this fair chance doctrine well in romans 9 and verse 1 he says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit, that I have great heaviness and continue sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cut off from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Paul was deeply concerned about his fellow kinsmen, the Jews of the day that had rejected the Messiah, and he said, look, if it, if it would do any good, now it wouldn't do any good, but if it would do some good, I could wish that I myself was just cut off from Christ. And he's struggling with how is God going to work it out? Because these people have, have for the most part, it seems, rejected their chance. But notice what Paul says in Romans 11 and verse 15. Romans 11 and verse 15. He says, for if the casting away of them, which is part of God's will, temporarily, be, re, be the receiving of the world, that is the casting away of the Jewish people and going to the Gentiles, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? What is life from the dead? Well, it's talking about the second resurrection. Okay, it's talking about a time the fair chance doctrine, when they will have a chance. Now let's consider the Valley of Dry Bones, because the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel talks about the fair chance doctrine. And we're going to go through these scriptures, Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Quite an eerie picture here, okay? And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, they were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, only you know. And again, he said, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath, to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sin you upon you, and shall bring up flesh upon you, and cover your skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 37 and verse 7, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I, as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. 
And when I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So, so far, there's no life in these people. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the winds, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Now notice this. Then he said to me, this is Ezekiel 37, verse 11. Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. No, it's not the end of the story. It's not the end of the story. There is the fair chance doctrine. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your grave, second resurrection, and give, cause you to come up out of your grave and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put, notice this, my spirit in you. What is that? That's the fair chance doctrine. That's the opportunity for salvation. And you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. You see, this is the fair chance doctrine. When, when God says, look, I'm going to put my spirit in you and I'm going to bring you up out of your graves and you're going to know that I am the Lord your God. Yeah, this is the fair chance doctrine being explained from the pages of your Bible. And you cannot look at this verse and say, well, that's prophecy that's already been fulfilled. You can't because there's never been a global resurrection of, of, of physical people back to life again. You know, people that have been dead back to life, the whole house of Israel. Okay, this has never taken place. This is a future event that will take place in the future at the second resurrection. And it's called the fair chance doctrine. Now, a lot of people will look at me and say, well, you don't believe in hell. I do believe in hell. The difference is I believe in a hell that's a lot hotter than most people believe in. I believe in a hell that will destroy the wicked. It's called the second death. Now, why is it called the second death? Why does your Bible refer to the second death? Well, the second death is the end of you. The second death does not mean eternal life in hell. The wages of sin is death, not eternal life in hell. Okay, the wages is, now the second death, obviously that's something you don't want to be a part of because it's the end of you. You will be destroyed in a lake of fire. Okay, but I believe once all is said and done with the fair chance doctrine that few people will have to be destroyed, that there will be only few that have to be destroyed in a lake of fire. And that is good news. That's the good news of the gospel. You know, I mean, let me tell you something. Most religious people worship a God who is a monster. Let me repeat that. Most religious people worship a God who is a monster. If you had a neighbor who every morning was torturing his puppies, just beating them, and every day you would hear the, 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 the whining and the moans of the dog, the little puppies being lacer, lacerated and, and open wounds and whipped every day. If you had a neighbor who tortured his puppies every day, what would you do? What would you do? Well, you'd probably call the law on this guy and, and, and turn him into the police. It is a felon to torture animals in America. Did you know that? And here's the thing. The U.S. Senate has a better understanding than most theologians because I, our government has laws against torturing animals. And there are all kinds of people that worship a God that would torture people for all of eternity. 
And they get it from a few vague scriptures about they take eternal torment and twist those words around and say, well, that means forever and ever and ever and ever you're going to be tortured. And, you know, they take Lazarus and the rich man, which is a parable that has really nothing to do with hellfire at all. And, and they use those scriptures, those two scriptures, to prove a diabolical doctrine that God tortures, but just like the neighbor, that every morning gets up and tortures his puppies. Okay. You see, see here's the problem. Only about 30% of the world's population even claim to be Christian. You see, the problem is when we look at America, we think everybody's Christian. Which is, a bit, which is the biggest joke you will ever kid yourself with. Um, no, 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 when we talk about the world's population, I mean, I mean, think about the Muslim community. Think about Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, think about in Africa, you know, their religion. You know, all, when you take the global, you know, the globe, the, the whole world, only about 30% of the world's population even claim to be Christian. Now, what do you think is going to happen to the 70% of humanity who are not Christian? You know, 70%, man, I didn't know the devil could do a better job at getting people lost. I mean, I thought God was stronger than that. I thought God could do a better job than that. But according to theologians, 70% of humanity will be tortured, get this, for all of eternity. That's 70%. Just like the neighbor that I told you about who goes out and tortures his puppies every single morning. And you get to hear it. Every single morning. There is this idea that in heaven that you can go over to hell and look at, I guess, family members. I guess children. I guess people that, that, that was from other nations, other countries, and, you know, that, that maybe over in Africa that just didn't have, and they, they'd never been told about Christ. And, so, and you get to watch them burn and be tortured. For the rest of your life, if you want to. You know, it's like a theater or something. It's like a show. It's like a soap opera. You, I mean, if you're into that kind of diabolical stuff, you can watch people being tortured. 70% uh, of humanity, you can watch them being tortured forever. If you so choose. Just like you might want to get up and watch your neighbor tor torture his puppies every morning. You know, it's... It, 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 Mainstream Christianity has presented to us a God who is a monster. A monster. And people buy into this nonsense. You know, one, I don't think people think when it comes to religion. I just think they go to church and it's like someone drills a hole in their head, pops in a funnel, and pours in mainstream Christianity. And it's all of this, you know, this heaven or hell, you know, being tortured for all eternity. And they just pop it in their heads, and that's it, and that's what I believe. And that's, I know this is the gospel truth, that these people are going to burn for all eternity. I just know that God is a monster. Yeah. People buy into this nonsense. And they believe it with all their hearts because people, for the most part, religious people refuse to think. They refuse to think. They refuse to read their Bibles. They just go to church to be spoon-fed every single thing, every concept they believe about the law. You know, the law's been abolished, been nailed to the cross, been fulfilled, been done away with. We don't need it. It's been rejected. Christ nailed it to his cross. People believe this. People believe that there's a Santa Claus that comes down chimney bring it, chimneys bringing gifts. People believe in Halloween in church. Why? Because the minister says we ought to do it. No one's thinking in church. If you want to know a place where people refuse to think, go to church. They just, they, just, they ain't going to do it. They excuse the grammar, but they're not going to do it. They're not going to think. They're not going to process what they think about or what they're being taught from the pulpit. They're not going to process it. They're just going to believe it. Okay. 
So Matthew 18 and verse 14 says, Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Isn't that great news? That it's not God's will that any of these little ones perish. It is God's will, and I forget where that verse is at, but that all should come to repentance. What does it mean when it says it's God's will that all should come to repentance? God has a will, and his will is not that 70% of humanity is lost. That's not his will. His will is that all come to repentance. Now, Revelation 20 and verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, you've heard of the great white throne judgment, have you not? Of course you have. And have you ever thought about, and you probably hadn't thought about it, but that the great white throne judgment doesn't make any sense? They've already been judged and sentenced. Think about it. What happens, according to mainstream, when you die? If you've been a good boy, you go to heaven. They've already been judged. They've already been sentenced. They're in heaven. What happens in mainstream Christianity if you're a bad boy? You go to hell. They've already been judged. They've already been sentenced. So what is this scripture talking about when it talks about and I saw the dead, Revelation 20, verse 12, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. Notice that, the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, okay, the books were open, which means the Bible. And then it says the book of life is open. All right, the reason, let me, let me, hear me out. This is the fair chance doctrine, okay? The reason the book of life is open is not to see who's in there. According to mainstream, they've already been judged and sentenced. The reason the book of life is open is to add new names to the book. It's called the fair chance doctrine. They're going to be given 100 years to repent and turn their lives toward God during the second resurrection. Again, it's called the fair chance doctrine doctrine, everyone who has ever lived and died will get a chance for salvation during God's timing. And that's what's really in your Bible. And praise God for what's really in your Bible. Because I do not worship. I want to go on record by saying I do not worship a God who is a monster, and neither should you. I'm David Freeman with Is That Really in the Bible? And I'll see you next time. Sometimes learning more about God is simply unlearning what someone else has told you about God. So in order to develop a deeper relationship with God, you must unlearn what you have learned. Only about a third of the world's population claim to be Christian, and the numbers are falling. If Christianity is getting smaller, that can only mean hell is getting larger. Does this really mean that God will consign at least 60% of humanity to a never-ending burning hell when they die? Is this really the action of a just and merciful God? The common teaching of hell is really a mistaken tradition that has replaced what the Bible actually reveals about life, death, and God's plan of salvation. It has extinguished the real hope that God offers for everyone who has ever lived. There are simple biblical truths that open up new avenues of understanding about how God treats everyone with respect and justice. 60% of humanity is not going to be tormented forever in a burning hell fire. Order your free book entitled, If God So Loved the World, Why Are So Many People Going to Hell? Order by writing to Church of God Rocky Mount, 27 Brookledge Lane, Rocky Mount, Virginia, 24151. 
That's Church of God Rocky Mount, 27 Brookledge Lane, Rocky Mount, Virginia, 24151. Also, visit us on the web at isthatreallyinthebible.net. Why have countless millions died without ever having had an opportunity to understand the purpose of life and to be saved? Shocking as it may sound, God does not intend for everyone to understand His truth at this time. If He wanted everyone to understand at this time, everyone would understand. Untold millions have died without ever having had an opportunity for salvation. God's seventh and final holy day reveals when and how they will have their day of salvation. Order your free magazine entitled, The Last Great Day. Order by writing to Church of God Rocky Mount, 27 Brookledge Lane, Rocky Mount, Virginia, 24151. That's Church of God Rocky Mount, 27 Brookledge Lane, Rocky Mount, Virginia, 24151. Also, visit us on the web at isthatreallyinthebible.net. This program has been paid for by the tithes and offerings of the Church of God Rocky Mount and friends of this ministry. If you have been challenged by listening to this program, then consider that a great blessing. You can visit us on the web at isthatreallyinthebible.net. It is the support of people like you that make this ministry possible. If you have been blessed by this understanding given to you today, then consider making a donation by writing to Church of God Rocky Mount, 27 Brookledge Lane, Rocky Mount, Virginia, 24151. That's Church of God Rocky Mount, 27 Brookledge Lane, Rocky Mount, Virginia, 24151.